Where do you come from? D'où vous, vous venez? Je viens de Canada. Oui? Oui, de Toronto. Canada anglais, hein? vous êtes anglophone. Je suis anglophone, je m'excuse vraiment. Alors, je oui. dois parler en anglais. Ce n'est pas une tare, mais <rire> vous comprenez quand je vous parle. Je, com je comprends. Ouais. Vous oui. comprenez quand notre, si très, très, très quand notre président Sarkozy parle, vous comprenez Non, pas du tout. Je ne comprends rien. <rire> Et vous, vous comprenez ah, C'est mon travail d'essayer de non, comprendre. Non, je comprends. Je comprends, ouais. mais... Alors, je, je comprends pas qu'est-ce qu'il fait, mais je comprends qu'est-ce qu'il dit. <rire> vous avez sorti ce bouquin, La, la stratégie du choc, euh, il y a à peu près un an, Naomi Klein. Euh, vous avez, le monde est bouleversé. Aujourd'hui, on, on se demande où on va. Ce livre arrive à point nommé. Euh, J'aimerais bien que vous nous résumiez votre stratégie du choc. En, en anglais, c'est... Euh, The shock doctrine. The oui. shock doctrine. Donc c'est plus une doctrine ou une, une, une idéologie qu'une stratégie. Non, c'est pas non. une idéologie, c'est une tactique. C'est une un stratégie. Non. Ouais. Uh, <laughs> and... Um, It's, I'm identifying a, a political tactic that has been in use uh, now for around 35 years, really the, the era of neoliberalism, of what in France is called savage capitalism. Um, and the book is an alternative history of how this very radical vision of the world that created the deregulated system that is now in crisis. Ce livre a été écrit avant la crise monétaire actuelle qu'on qu qu vit. Euh, en même temps, euh, on a l'impression euh, que le politique agit aujourd'hui, mm -hmm. c'est-à-dire que le politique va euh, so sortir de l'argent pour euh, renflouer les banques, les euh, pays euh, européens garantissent pour certains aujourd'hui en gros euh, tout ce que les gens ont mis dans la banque, il y a une espèce de protection qui monte, on dirait, mm -hmm. on dirait pas qu'ils profitent du, du désastre, hein, mais peut-être c'est pas ça que, peut-être qu'il faut voir autre euh, well, ailleurs. Well, these are tremendous public subsidies to corporations, what we're seeing now. I don't think we're seeing a reversal of the pattern of the past 35 years. In fact, we've seen this cycle repeat again and again. I call it boom and bail capitalism. So the good times... Boom and bail. Boom and bail. In the boom times, you have the profits uh, kept in the public domain, but they're bubbles. They're, they're, they're speculative bubbles. For, that's what deregulation creates. It creates the context for these, for these bubble booms. Um, and when they pop, because that's what bubbles do, they're filled with hot air, they pop, and then the state intervenes and nationalizes the debt, nationalizes the risk. Because, of course, what's going on is that a private crisis, a crisis In, on, on Wall Street mm -hmm. in the United States is being moved, not solved, but moved from Wall Street to Washington. And you know, one of the things that I, I talk about in the book is this cycle of privatizing debt and privatizing profit and nationalizing debt. And in fact, it was the case in the very first laboratories for neoliberalism, Chile and Argentina in the 1970s, mm -hmm. were the first experiments in the Chicago School of, of Economics, the first countries where these policies were tried out. And they had a good time uh, at the, in the late 70s, um, but there was a crisis. The, the, the financiers had a, had a good time. They created a bubble, tremendous growth. It was described as the economic miracle of Chile. Um, and Argentina as well. And in 1982, the, the bubble burst, as bubbles do. And in Chile, the first laboratory, Pinochet responded by nationalizing a wave of private companies. And in Argentina, the very last act of the dictatorship was to nationalize the debt of the top multinational corporations. We would be very silly to, to look at this crisis as an aberration from neoliberal history. This is repeated again and again and again. And the rule of neoliberalism is not free market ideology. The rule of neoliberalism is what's good for multinationals goes. And sometimes what's good for multinationals is laissez-faire, and sometimes what's good for multinationals is state intervention. Vous dites que, en gros, le capitalisme aujourd'hui attend les crises pour agir, pour d'une certaine manière profiter du désarroi des gens, pour imposer certains changements qui ne seraient pas possibles, euh, que les populations n'accepteraient pas. Vous avez un exemple très précis sur les écoles publiques à la Nouvelle-Orléans après le passage du cyclone Katrina. Euh, là, c'est c'est vrai que là, y a, on fait table rase du passé au sens propre du terme, comme parlent les révolutionnaires, comme disent les révolutionnaires, et on, on, on privatise l'école. Est-ce que vous avez, vous avez fait une enquête sur le terrain Vous pouvez nous, nous la résumer. Elle est, je trouve ça très intéressant pour comprendre. Let's remember what what failed in New Orleans was it wasn't a hurricane, okay? It was a hurricane, 
but by the time the hurricane hit New Orleans, it was already downgraded to a tropical storm. It wasn't that strong. What failed in New Orleans was the public sphere. The public levee system that, that, that was supposed to protect the city collapsed. The public transportation system mm -hmm. failed. It was a failure of the government that had been allowed to degrade to, to such a point. So yes, there was this assumption, well, th well this will be a, a wake-up call, a wake-up call, uh, and, and they will have to rebuild. But in fact, if you go to New Orleans today, what you see is that the Bush administration's vision of reconstruction consisted of finishing the job of killing the state, of killing the public sphere. So this public school system has turned into the leading laboratory, and this is a phrase that, that the New York Times has used, the leading laboratory for charter schools, which are private, privately run uh, uh, public schools. Les écoles sous contrat, c'est ça, exactly. comme chez nous. Hein. Yeah. And um, the public housing systems, New Orleans has some very large public housing, social housing as you call it here. As soon as the, the city flooded, I was there at the time, you had politicians and lobbyists saying, now, we'll, now we can close the housing projects. In fact, I quote a Republican uh, politician saying, um, we couldn't clean out the housing projects, but God did. And you, had, and you had Bush who went on television and said, we're going to have the ownership society in New Orleans, and we're going to get people into homes that they own instead of these, the, these public housing. So you see a direct connection, actually, between what happened in New Orleans and what's going on now with the subprime mortgage crisis, because this is not, you know, a, 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 an accident of history. The time is very interesting.